All right, boys and girls here in school and friends at home, welcome back from the long weekend. Um, it's so good to see all of you, and I hope you enjoyed your time off from school. So today we're going to continue our study of perimeter, and we're going to do it by solving word problems. In word problems, I know I used to not like word problems at all, but really they're a, a real-world application of what you've learned in math. And so that's the real purpose of math, is to solve problems in real life. So let's go ahead and read our learning target together on the count of one. Are we ready? Three, two, one. We can solve word problems to determine perimeter with given side lengths. Okay. Now let's just remember, what is the perimeter of a shape? It is the boundary or outline of a shape, right? So it's the distance around the shape. It's the outline. It is the boundary. All those words help us understand what perimeter is. What is the inside of the shape? The, the space that the shape covers, what is that called? Bell? The, the area. So we don't want to forget. Area is measured in square units. Perimeter is measured in just plain old units because really you're just measuring the distance around the shape. So friends at home, we're going to be solving word problems that are on page 88 and page 89 of your workbook. So um, you can watch the video and um, I will upload the pages as well on the Seesaw, so if you want to go back and forth between the template, you can. Or if you prefer to do it in your workbook, you can do that and take pictures of it. Okay? So let's go ahead and get started with our first word problem. It says, Mrs. Coslow put a border around a five foot by six foot rectangular bulletin board. How many feet of border did Mrs. Coslow use? Well, we know where you're talking about perimeter because what important word do you see in that word problem? that tells you we're going to be working on perimeter. And I think I'm going to pull sticks today because I know a lot of you like to volunteer, but I want to make sure everybody gets a turn. So Val, what word in there helps us understand? Five foot by six foot Bulletin board? Well, that helps me decide what picture I'll draw. I know I need a five foot by six foot rectangular bulletin board, so I know it will be a rectangle. So go ahead and underline those, circle rectangle. But how do we know we're looking for perimeter? Because what? it says how many feet of border. Very good. There's that word. So let's go ahead and circle that. The word border, remember, indicates perimeter. The border, the outline, the boundary of the shape. So we will be using read, draw, write, boys and girls. So we're, we just read the problem, underlined our knowns. And now we you know what we want to do. We want to draw a picture write a number sentence, and then write a target sentence. So we all know what a rectangle looks like, right? We know our geometry. So let's go ahead and draw a rectangle to represent the bulletin board. And I'm going to make this side a little bit shorter because this is going to be my five foot side. And this top side will be my six foot side. So I just want the top to be a little bit longer. And then we know, because we know the attributes of rectangles, that if this side is six feet, then this side is also six feet. If this side is five feet, then this side is also five feet because opposite sides of a rectangle are equal. Okay? So we have our picture. This is the bulletin board and this is the border around the bulletin board. Next, we need a number sentence. So I, I like to get in the habit of writing a P equals because P represents perimeter. And we need to find the distance around the shape, the entire outline. So we would go six feet, five feet, six feet, five feet. You can kind of trace it with your finger. Now what I'm gonna suggest, how many of you like to add doubles? I don't know why, but doubles always seem easier for us. So when I list these, I'm going to go, I'm gonna start with six feet, I'm gonna put six feet plus the other six feet and then I have two five feet, five feet plus five feet. So I've got four sides and I've got four lengths. Yes, Eli? You know that already? Well, let's just wait a second. Now that I did this, look what I'm going to do next. Excuse me, guys. Yes? Um, you can put parentheses around, you can put parentheses and 
we could absolutely we could use multiplication, but let's finish this method first. But you're absolutely right, Steve. So I am going to put parentheses around my six feet and six feet. That shows everyone, including myself, what I'm doing first in my head. So first I'm adding six feet and six feet. And what do I get when I add six feet and six feet, boys and girls? I get 12 feet. So I'm going to put it underneath here. So I'm going to solve this kind of in steps. And then I'm going to put the five feet and the five feet in parentheses. And five feet plus five feet is 10 feet. And then I have to add those two. Now it's pretty easy to add 12 and 10, isn't it? 12 feet plus 10 feet is 22 feet. Is that what you got, Eli, when you got the, the answer? The 22 feet, very nice. Now, I don't want to take a lot of time with this, but Val's absolutely right. We could use multiplication here because I see two sixes and I see two fives, and that's repeated addition. So another number sentence you could write is you could write P equals, well, we have two sixes, so two times six feet. And then we can add to that two times five feet. And we're still going to get two times six is 12. Two times five is 10. If we add those two, we would still get 22 feet. Which one makes the most sense to you? If you like the first method better, raise your hand. If you like the second method better, raise your hand. So whatever makes the most sense to you and you feel like you can do it and um, you know you're finding the boundary or the outline, you may use whatever method works best, okay? Now, what do we need? We have a number sentence. We did our drawing. What are we still missing? Target sentence. So let's go ahead over here and I'm going to put TS for target sentence. And it says, how many feet of border did Mrs. Coslow Coslo use? I'm going to replace her name with a pronoun she uses 22 feet of border. And there, boys and girls, is a word problem where we solve for perimeter. So make sure you have all those steps. Make sure you've underlined your nouns. You've drawn your picture, labeled all your side lengths, written your number set. A good student probably would show both just because they want to give themselves the option practice with both methods, and then you need your target sequence. Okay, hand on your head if you're ready for the next problem. You got your target sentence. All right, let's move on. Problem number two. Okay, number two says Jason built a model of the Pentagon for a social studies project. He made each outside wall 33 centimeters long. What is the perimeter of Jason's model pentagon? So what are some important things that we need to underline in here? Clear, what's one important thing? Okay, pentagon. And what does pentagon mean? I know it's a shape. It's a polygon. Pardon? Five. Yeah, it means five sides. So I'm gonna put five right above pent because now I know it means five sides. So please do that to remind yourself Caden that pentagon means five sides. Nice job. What else is in there that's going to be important, Caden, besides he built a model of a pentagon? Okay, each outside wall is 33 centimeters. So make sure you're underlining that, Caden, in your word problem. And then what is our unknown? Our unknown is the question that says, what is the perimeter of Jason's model pentagon? So we have to find the border, the outline, the boundary of the shape. Now, how do you draw a pentagon? It's kind of like a little house. So I'm going to start with a roof. 
there's two sides, right? And then I'm going to draw my walls, three, four, and then I just have to connect the bottom, and now I've got a nice looking pentagon on four sides. Now, not all pentagons look like that. A pentagon is just a shape with five sides. Now, our picture's not done until we label our side lengths. And that was one of our knowns that Caden told us about. So each outside wall is 33 centimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and label each outside wall with 33 centimeters. Yes? I think that is a regular pentagon cam. Is that what you were thinking? Why is it a regular because pentagon? Because each side is equal, so it looks regular. Very good. So friends at home, cam bows are just uh, remind us this is a regular pentagon because all the sides are equal. Okay? Okay, make sure you have your late side labeled, bud. Okay, now what number sentence will we write? Well, remember perimeter is the distance around. So what number sentence will we write for this? Lucas. P equals P. Okay, so we could do 33 times 5. You're absolutely right. Or 5 times 33. Huh? But that's, a, I know. So you're probably thinking, huh? I'm not sure I know how to do that. So what would be the easier way to do it for a third grader who doesn't really know yet how to multiply 5 times 33? Aubrey, what else could we do? Yes. And so how many 33s would we have to add, honey? Five. Yep. So I've got one, two, three sides, four sides. We'll go back and we can try the multiplication if you'd like a challenge on this Tuesday morning. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five because there's five sides. You like got that written, bud? And now this is where we use our parentheses again to show how we'll group those numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do whoops, is put these two 33s together. And adding 33 and 33 is pretty easy, right? Go ahead, Lucas. What is 33 plus 33? Everybody. 66. So I'm 66. I'm going to put this 33 and this 33 together, and I've got 66 again. And then I have one more 33 to add. Now, I don't know about you, but I think it's easier to add 66 and 33. So 66 and 33 is 99. And then I still have to add my 66 to my 99. Okay, so does everybody understand that? Let's run through our steps again. I put 33 down there and added it five times because I have five sides. And because it's so hard to add all that, I'm going to do two 33s at once and get 66. Do another two 33s and get 66, and then I still have my last 33. Now when I came down to my next line, I put my 66 and 33 together and got 99. But I still have one more addition to do, don't I? I have to add 66 and 99. I'm going to go over here and do it with an algorithm on the side of the page. Who already added that algorithm? Kalia, do you have 66 and 99? What did you get? I solved it in 100, but I got 165. Well, you are right. It is 165. So 66 and 99 mm -hmm. makes 165 centimeters. Yes? Okay, so let's just look at that. Some of you may have done, what did you do, Kalia? What was your different method? I did, I added 33 plus 33 plus 66 plus 
And that works too. So, boys and girls, you know what this is called? It's called the associative property. Okay, so you can group whichever ones you want. Community property, you can put the numbers in any order you want. You should still get the same answer. Okay? So the answer is 165 centimeters. But let's just see how multiplication would work. First, we're like, Lucas said, oh, I don't know if I could do that. I bet you can. So eyes and ears up here. If you have somewhere on your paper you can do this, I think you'll think this is kind of fun, and you'll impress yourself. I could also put P equals 5 times 33 centimeters, couldn't I? That's really what it is, right? So I want everybody writing this down because it'll be good practice for you. You'll be doing a lot of this in fourth grade. Now, remember our friend the distributive property? I can't multiply 5 times 33, but I could decompose 33 into two other numbers. Thank you, Rog, 30 and 3. So my next line will look like this, 5 times 30 plus 3. All right, you just decompose 33. And now, what's my next line going to look like? Well, I have to multiply 5 times 30. And then I also have to multiply 5 times 3 and add those. And oh my goodness, I think that's pretty easy. What's 5 times 30, everybody? 150, because you're multiplying by multiples of 10. And then 5 times 3 is 15. And if we add 150 and 15, we get 165. Did anybody do this on their own? Multiply 5 times 33? Awesome. Did you get the right answer, Ori? Oh. Do you understand what your misunderstanding was? Okay, that's all that counts. Make sense now? So how many of you prefer adding 33 five times? Raise your hand. How many of you would prefer doing five times 33? Could you do 5 times 33 without Mrs. Reed walking you through the steps? Yes. Yeah. You could do that? I just do it in my head. I just skip the head. I just wanted to shake up the head. Okay. All right, very last thing. What is the perimeter of Jason's model Pentagon? We need a PS. And we answered that in a complete sentence. What is the perimeter? We're going to say the perimeter is... centimeters. Make sure you're dressing up your numbers. Number three, put your finger on your nose if you're ready for number three. Who's ready for number three? Just a couple more seconds. If you're ready for number three, go ahead and read it and underline your notes on your own, please. And then I'm going to have somebody else read it out loud for us. Boys and girls, there is a lot of work to show for each one of these, so I might suggest that you try to write small to fit your work in. The bigger you write, the harder it's going to be. Okay? So think about the OG sheet of this. Yeah, so the small you write. Maybe just write it again. All right, here we go. Number three. Could I have a volunteer to read number three for us, please? Corbin, go ahead. Okay, very good, nice job. So let's underline a rectangular eight yard by nine yard vegetable garden. So we all know what a rectangle looks like, right? And we 
probably a lot of us have gardens in our backyard or maybe your grandparents have a garden or your neighbor has a garden and usually they're rectangles. So that's what we'll be drawing. And we need to figure out how many yards of fencing do they need to put around the garden. So if you think about a garden and you're putting up fence, what are you doing? You're putting it around the boundary of your garden, the perimeter of your garden, right? So let's go ahead and draw what that garden would look like. It's a rectangle. And I'm going to make this side eight yards. And then this side is going to be a little bit longer. It will be nine yards. Go ahead and draw your rectangle and eight, label all your side lines. Remember, make sure the longer one is nine yards and the shorter one is eight yards. And there's their garden. Go ahead and write your own number sentence to find the perimeter of that garden. P equals. And I bet we'll get a couple different number sentences. So I'm going to write two here. Friends at home, you can choose to do whichever one you're more comfortable with. If you really want to go all out, you can show both of them. So friends at home, I just circulated to see how, wanted to give the kids in class a little independent practice coming up with some number sentences. A hint or a tip I would give you, make sure you do end up labeling all your side lengths. Even though it's a rectangle and we know that if this side is eight yards, this side is eight yards, please label both sides, okay? If we know this side is nine yards, we know this side is nine yards. Remember, attribute of rectangles, opposite sides are equal, so let's make sure we label all those. So I'm just going to write a couple of the number sentences I saw when I circulated. Some people chose to strictly do addition, and they wrote 8 plus 9 and 8 plus 9. That was four sides. I'm getting rid of my labels just because I'm not going to have enough room there. So raise your hand if you did that uh, addition. A couple of people did in your class. Okay, and then 8 plus 9 is 17 and 8 plus 9 is 17. And if you add 17 and 17, you can do your algorithm if you need to on the side of your paper. But class, when we add 17 and 17, what do we get? 34. So that's 34 yards. Now, some people chose to do the multiplication because there were two nines and there were two eights. So some people did this, 2 times 9 plus 2 times 8. And 2 times 9 is 18. 2 times 8 is 16. And guess what you get if you add 18 and 16 class? You get 34 again. So either way, you would get 34 yards. Okay? Let's go ahead and write our target sentence to answer that. How many yards of fencing do they need? You are going to write your target sentence. They will need blank yards of fencing. That's a good thing too. Yeah. Anybody want to share their target sentence with me so I can write it instead of me always sharing with you? Eli would write. How many yards of fencing do they need? They will need 34 yards of fencing. Beautiful. They will need. 34 yards of fencing. Okay, let's go on to the next one. The next one is going to be a lot. Look at that shape. Remember, boys and girls, keep your voice 
yourself until you're called up, okay? Or asked to share. All right, number four, it says, Marion painted a, paints a five-pointed star in her bedroom wall. Each side of the star is 18 inches long. What is the perimeter of the star? Let's do this, because this is a tricky shape. Let's take our finger, and let's trace the perimeter of the star. So I'm going to start right here at the top, and I'm going to trace the perimeter of the star. Boy, that's a long ways around, isn't it? That's 10. Aha, uh -huh. he said 10 sides, so you must have counted while you traced. No, no, because because there's five points and each point has two sides. Five okay. times two is Very good, five times two is nine. So let's label each one. So some of you might think five points, it's five times 18, but it's not. These are only the points, the sides, there's 10 of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and label each one of my sides. And if you do, you should find out that there are, Raghav is exactly right, 10 sides. And I do want you to label each one. And you should find that you wrote 18 10 times. You can count your 18s. Teens. I can see Freya's counting hers. You got 10 of them. Very good. If you didn't get 10, you might have missed one. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I know I have 10. So what number sentence will we write for this? Well, I certainly hope I'm not going to add 18 10 times. What would be the quickest, easiest way to find the perimeter of this star? Valerie, P equals 18, what? P equals 18 times 10 or 10 times 18. Yeah, and I'm going to put 10 times 18 inches because I always like to put the number of groups first. I just like to be consistent with that. My brain likes consistency. Okay, so 10 times 18. What does 10 represent? The number of sides. What does 18 inches represent? The length of one side. So now 10 times 18, that's easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? When we multiply by 10, what do we do? Just add zero. So 10 times 18, I'm going to take 18 and add 0, and I will get 180 inches. What is the perimeter of the star? TS. The perimeter is 180 inches. Okay, we have time for one more. We might forget about the last one or we might go back and do the last one later. So go ahead and read number five. There's something really tricky about number five and I want to know who can catch it. The soccer team jogs around the outside of the soccer field twice to warm up. The rectangular field measures 60 yards by 100 yards. What is the total number of yards the team jogs? So what do you think is tricky about this problem? Yeah. I think it's tricky, but I think it's tricky. It's in the, bound, the boundary for me. Double. Okay, very good. Nice job, Kim. It says they jog around it twice. So we're going to have to, whatever we get, we're going to have to double it because they do the boundary two times. And a soccer field, well, we all know what that looks like. It's a rectangle, right? A lot of you play soccer in here. So I'm going to draw my soccer field and I know this side is 60 yards. The long side would be 100 yards. Opposite sides are equal 60 yards. Opposite sides are equal 100 yards. So I'm going to find the perimeter of the soccer field and then I'm going to double it. So our number sentence can be P equals, and I like to use my doubles, so I'm going to do 100 plus 100, and then I'm going to add 60 plus 60. Why? Because my brain just works better with doubles, too.
And then it's easy to add, right? 100 plus 100 is 200. Easy. And 60 plus 60, that's a little bit trickier, but 60 plus 60 is 120. And now that should be pretty easy. 200 plus 120 is 320. But if they're going to do it twice, we could even draw a number bond. We could put 320 for the first time they go around, 320 for the second time they go around. What do we got to do? We got to add 320 plus 320, right? And all of this actually is pretty easy math to do. Yeah, it's easier than most math. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to put, instead of P, I'm going to put total equals. The total for both times is 320 plus 320. Anybody do that and get it mentally? Eli, what'd you get? 640. Very good, 640. So now all we need is our TS. What is the total number of yards the team jogs? The team, team jogs, jogs 640 yards. 640 yards in total. That's fiction. No one would actually jog 640 yards to win. Oh, I think they would. My son used to play high school soccer, and they had to jog around. Very good. So 320 plus 320 is 640. All right, boys and girls. So friends at home, I'm giving you a break today. You only have to do the first five problems. Remember to go back and forth between the video and your template. If you want to do the work in your workbook, that's fine. Make sure the pictures you take are eligible, legible for your teacher to see. Okay, and friends here, let's keep that because I would like to go over the last problem later and challenge you, okay?